Meet Dr. Jacob Radzikowski, molecular biologist and cordon bleu chef. Dr. Jacob, I'm intrigued. Why am I here? OK, Denise, so imagine you're a chicken nugget. <laughs> so are you ready to be cooked? I am indeed. All right, let's go. <laughs> it might look like a set from a game show, but it's actually great at demonstrating how an air fryer works. I hope. All right, Denise, are you ready? I'm ready! You sure? I think so. All right, let's go. In a conventional oven, air is heated from below. Particles of hot air then rise from the bottom, gradually cooking our chicken nuggets from beneath. But in an air fryer, the hot air, our glittery tokens, hits Denise Van Nugget on all sides quickly, cooking the outside much quicker than the inside. More like dunking me in a deep fat fry wood. I'm cooked! <laughs> How was it, Denise? Well, I'd say I'm a bit crispy on the outside now, but how is this like an air fryer? So essentially, in a deep fryer, you use oil, and the oil is great at transferring heat. Air is not, not as great as transferring heat to the food, but if you use a powerful fan and move the air around, the air can reach all the surface of the chicken nugget. It can dry it out. The temperature can be high enough for a, something called a Maillard reaction to occur. And Maillard reaction is when protein and sugar react together, and they create this nice brown color and a lot of flavor as well. The scientific name for crispy. So the food seems like it's deep fried, but it's just air. So the air in the air fryer is fast enough to penetrate under thick food particles like potato skins, but not fast enough to shred your food to pieces. Yes, the air in some air fryers can reach up to 43 miles an hour. That speed kind of limits what kind of foods you can cook in an air fryer. So if you put something like a soup, it will splash all over and, and it will make a big mess. So air fryers get similar results to deep frying, but using air instead of oil to make food brilliantly crispy. But they aren't so great for liquids, delicate foods, or the kind of thing you might boil on the hob. Of course, what you can do with one depends on which one you buy. And trust me, the choice can be overwhelming. There's so many different models, from the very basic to ones with built-in meat thermometers, or even ones that steam cook too. And should you be worried about the space they take up or the noise they make? They're all different, but some are as loud as the average washing machine. So, is it worth spending loads on a pricey one? Thankfully, help is at hand. Hi, Hannah. Hello. I'm at the Good Housekeeping Institute to meet senior homes writer Hannah Mendelssohn. So, if you're thinking of buying an air fryer, what are the questions that you should be asking? whether or not they want one basket or two baskets, whether it will fit in their kitchen, if all the programs that it has are things they're going to use, whether they want touchscreen buttons or dials. There are a lot of things to consider. In the test kitchen today, we'll be looking at three air fries, all with different features at a range of prices. First, the Amazon Basics, a small four-litre single compartment device with simple manual controls that retails at around £65. Next, the Salter Dual with digital controls and two baskets for a higher 7.4 litre capacity. It sells for around £110. And last, the Russell Hobbs Satisfry Air Fryer and Multi Cooker. It holds 5.5 litres, but it's a slow cooker too and costs a bit more £140. With the help of senior tester Blossom, we'll be looking at everything from ease of use to build quality. But the most important test of all is how they cook the nation's favourite air-fried food, chips. When we test chips, we're looking for how they cook. So are they greasy? Are they not? Do they have that nice colour that you look for? And do they crisp up nicely? We also want to know how quickly they'll cook because part of the reason air fries are great is because they're speedy. Our second test is the fairy cake test. When we test these, we're looking for that golden colour that you get in the oven and also how well they rise, because this tells us how the air is moving within the air fryer and if it's doing its job properly. Seeing them work, you can bank on the testing team leaving no metric nor measured in the pursuit of check box triumph. Right, I think it's a 14. Mm. Look. I think this could be a new career for me. So, what did we learn? Should we start with Amazon? Yes. 
I'm actually quite impressed with this one. I think that the chips look a really good colour. Chips, I'm really impressed with. Yeah, they're all really consistently golden, which looks very appetising. And the cupcakes are consistent as well. You don't get that same precision. You can see that the cupcakes have a bit of movement, which means that the air isn't circulating as well as it might. But that aside, it's still fared pretty well. This is a great buy that more than stands up to some of the much pricier models. These look a bit more overcooked, I think, and actually some of them are a bit burnt. Yeah, they're a bit uneven, and I think I would definitely lower the temperature next time. Everything was cooked using the manufacturer's instructions in our test, but you might need a bit of trial and error to get the best results. The same with the cupcakes, actually. These ones are a bit brown, but a few minutes less, and they might be really nicely gold. But the two baskets are still really beneficial if you're feeding a family or a bigger household. This is the Russell Hobbs. I have to say, the cupcakes, I am very impressed. Yeah, these would score the highest marks out of the ones we've tested today. They are a really, really nice colour and they've risen fairly evenly. And the chips are also really evenly cooked and quite golden brown, so it's performed very well. So, Hannah, do you think it's worth spending that little bit more? It's all about how much you want to spend and what you need for your kitchen and home.